Hey folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. So I'm back with my review of the Real Link Go security camera. Um, if you missed it, uh, I did a part one unboxing and setup about three weeks ago. So I've given it a good three weeks of use to uh, formulate my review. And uh, it's been in all kinds of weather conditions. We've got, had some nice hot summer days, but also some rain and wind. So I'm going to pull it off and pull the solar panel off and we'll have a look at the conditions. And we'll go through uh, the, the phone app screens in depth and also give you some uh, footage from, uh, that I've captured over the time. So let's, let's go inside and we'll check that out. Get out of this rain. Here we go, let's just have a closer look at things, make sure nothing was damaged by the weather. Solar panel looks good. This is a 2.8 watt, 6 volt solar panel, 480 milliamps. Did a pretty good job of charging it actually, it charged it quite quickly and kept it right up at uh, right around 98% to 100% uh, the whole time I had it up there. So I was pleased with the solar panel. No signs of corrosion on that or anything. A closer look at the camera. Looks pretty good. Usually here with the rain and close to the ocean, if anything is going to rust, it rusts pretty quickly actually. Let's pull this apart and make sure. Looks okay. No problems there. Like this cover kept it protected. Is it? We had a few days uh, last night. It rained a lot. Pull this cover off. Have a look at it. Tiny bit of moisture's in there. Don't see anything inside? It's all dry in there. Good. So past the weather test, let's move on and uh, give you a look at some of the, the screen settings in the, in the little app that comes with it. Okay guys, let's just go through the app here. So I have my Real Link app on the phone. We'll launch it and it's connecting. It takes uh, usually 10 seconds or so to connect the live stream. So now we have a live stream of the outside there. I just put the camera outside in the campsite and see how it looks there with the color and everything on the phone. Um, so what it does is it loads it in um, a low resolution first so you don't use a lot of bandwidth. There's a setting here to go from, they call it fluent, which is a low resin to 1080p. So we'll just switch over to 1080p for you. And you can, I'll give you an indication of what kind of quality it is of that. So takes a little longer to load. There we are. Now we're at 1080p. You can see it's much sharper and I can zoom in on things now and it's still quite clear. I can read Columbia there, which is nice once you can zoom in and, and take a look at things closer, especially if there's a person in there that you're watching. Okay, so we'll just switch back it uses a lot of a lot of a bandwidth when it's in that mode. It tells you the bandwidth up here. A um, couple other features. Um, if you if you see something you want to take a quick snapshot, that'll save it to your phone. You can also hit the video. You can see right now I'm recording video, so you can record something that's happening there. Hit that, and then that'll also save to your phone. So you can go full screen and back. Um, you can also play sound. So it has a mic so if someone was there speaking you could hear what they were saying. Um, you can also press this button here and you can speak back to them. Um, I don't find the the speakers and the microphone that great but it's kind of nice to be able to, to hear what's going on if you're monitoring something. And over here we have you can change to black and white like that um, color or auto 
So in auto mode, and sometimes it's a bit finicky with the touch screen. In auto mode, it'll automatically go to black and white at night. So that's your live view there. Um, let's go to playback mode. So this will where you play back all the different uh, motion motion captures. So this is some earlier. So we got uh, me here. Taking a little while to load. There we are. So there I am, creeping around the campsite. And it's caught me. I can zoom in, see what's going on there. Let's go back. There's another playback motion. That's actually playing back in uh, full HD there. See how clear it is. That's why it's kind of lagging a bit because I'm, I'm not only playing over my phone cellular, I'm playing over the um, real Lingo cellular connection. So let's just put that back at uh, the fluent mode. See, it gives you a warning when you're playing over cellular data too. Usually you can play over Wi-Fi. There we go. So it's you know it's a little bit more uh, mushier now, but that's the screen where you review all your all your goings on in the campsite, figure out what was happening, and also when when it triggers something, it will uh, it will automatically uh, give you a warning on your phone. You can get an audio audio beep on your phone um, if somebody's triggered the motion cam. So there's, you can just see this PIR, that's the motion sensor, passive infrared sensor, something like that. Anyway, you can turn that on or off, so you don't have to have it capturing motion if you don't want it to. Um, let's go into this cloud. So in the cloud storage, you give you, they give you a gigabyte of free cloud storage, but keep in mind, when, when you use it, when your camera is uploading to the cloud, it's using your bandwidth off the cell. Um, data sim in, in inside the camera. So you can see here um, I had some of those motion things go up upload to the cloud. The um, reason you want to do that is is one thing is if someone was were to take your camera you know some thief goes and steals the camera you could still see footage even though the camera's gone it's already been uploaded into cloud storage. So you can play that back on the computer I'll show you that later. And you can you can turn the, the cloud storage on and off right now. See, I don't have it set. You can have different cameras. You can add multiple cameras onto this, I think up to maybe four cameras or something. But each, keep in mind, each camera has to have a, a, its own cell plan and SIM card. So it can get expensive. Okay, let's go and look at all the settings. There we go. So you can see it takes sometimes takes a little while to load because everything's being loaded over the, the cell network. So we have battery there and I'm at 65% battery. Now the battery life was really good. This thing will, will monitor it over time um, because I unplugged it and restarted it, restarted it. But before I was getting a little graph along here of my battery usage and I actually unplugged the solar for about five or six days and it only went down to 50% so it doesn't use a lot of battery power. I'm really happy about that. Um, here we can set different display. You can rotate it, change camera name, put watermarks, anti-flicker, day night. There's your quality settings. You've got clear um, which is the 1080p but you can set all the different frame rates and max bit rates for fluent I don't know why they call it fluent. It just it means low res anyway. You can set the low resolution settings or the clear settings. In there, let's go back here. PIR settings, you can enable or disable it. You can also schedule it so you can have it come on when you want. 
So if you have a certain time of day where there's a lot of stuff triggering it and you don't want it, you don't have to have that on. And then sensitivity, I found it triggered, you know, up to about 20 or 30 feet, no problem. The default is 80. It doesn't trigger really far away. Um, I found it within the campsite, though, it, it triggered no problem. Go back, alarm sound. You can have different alarm sounds. If someone actually triggers the motion detector, you can have uh, it go off on them with different sounds. And you can actually customize your own sound so you could record your voice saying, hey, get away from my RV. And it would, when they triggered the motion thing, it would, it would give them an, an, an audio alarm with your voice. Uh, email. So this is supposed to uh, email you when you get a, uh, an alarm, but uh, I never could get it to work. I gave it a try, but it, uh, the one time I, it sent, it was, I was trying to set it up with Gmail, and Gmail gave me a warning that Insecure App was trying to, to do something, so I decided against it. I don't need to have my Gmail account hacked. But anyway, there, there is a capability of that. Okay, and you can decide to record the audio um, in when uh, when when uh, in, during the playback version, so you can hear audio when you play it back or not. It's up to you. Uh, what else do we got here? We got more. You can set your password for the app, date and time, um, your storage. Um, you can format your storage. All the video gets uh, recorded onto that that micro SD card that you can actually just pull out and plug into your computer um, and look at things as well. You don't have to look at them all through this app. You can look at them on a laptop. And then when you're, when you're ready, you can format the card and erase everything in one go. Um, not sure what upgrade is. Oh, that's probably to upgrade the firmware or this app maybe. One or the other. I think maybe it might upgrade the firmware in the camera automatically even. Uh, okay, what else do we got? Infrared lights, that's for nighttime. You can have them on or off. Um, push notifications on or off. That's if it, it gives you an alert on your phone. Sometimes it'll pop up and go motion detected. Um, other, and sometimes it'll give it like a little ring on your phone so you can set that there. Um, you can also uh, share if someone, if you have a family member or friend that has the same app, you can have them take a picture of this screen and then it'll share the camera. Um, info device name so you can change your device name. I just have it on Love Your RV Cam right now. And then it shows all the all the numbers and stuff. I should probably blur that screen. There we go. That's about it for the settings. There's just a plus to add more devices. You saw when I set that up. Um, in here, there's a support center with help, um, product registration, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a settings. Um, if you have multiple devices, you can adjust the order, message sound settings, different things for uh, for when it when the, when a uh, alert pops up on your phone automatic live view when you start the app data usage warning kinds of in-depth stuff there you usually don't have to set much there there we go go back and check out what's going on out there okay so that's a, a brief overview of the the settings all the settings in the app so uh, let's continue on and I'll give you my uh, overall likes and dislikes for the real link go uh, first I'll give you some uh, sample footage that I recorded this has been downloaded to my computer guy disconnecting his uh, sewer there he got caught on motion and this is a rainy night footage. Shows you what the, the night vision looks like. And this is just the, the low resolution resolution version. And another view of night footage. Not too bad. 
and another day showing you how wide the angle is on the camera so you can see them there's multiple campsites are, are shown in this one. And here is a sample of the real link cloud storage. So this is I set up in a Love RV account. And here's some sample files. So they've been uploaded to cloud when, when motion was triggered. And uh, so now they exist on the on the web. So I don't have to worry about uh if someone takes the camera. Looks like it just uploads in a in a low resolution setting. I'm not sure if you can change that or not, but pretty cool. Okay, let's cut to the chase. My uh, top pros and cons of this little Real Link Go camera. Let's start with the pros. Uh, first, uh, I like the push notifications. That's great. You can uh, have something uh, look at the security camera pointing at something, and you'll you'll get an update right away. If somebody's uh, messing around with something uh, the app works pretty well it's quite intuitive um, pretty easy to use uh, <clears throat> I like the 1080p it actually truly does have a, a really good camera on it um, I was surprised how clear it was um, especially when you're running in that 1080p mode and you can zoom right in on, on part of the frame to see something so that, I give them top marks for for the the quality of the picture on it um, and then one of the really top pros for me was the battery life, especially with the solar panel. Um, the battery alone probably would last, I'd say, eight or ten days, just based on my uh, experience with it. Let's put it left there. So they got a nice big uh, battery pack in that thing. And then with the solar panel, I, it'd probably just go indefinitely as long as you wanted it to. So those are the, the main pros. There's lots of other little things, but I'll just stick to the the big ones so let's get into the cons um i don't know about that email notification i didn't like that it that, that gmail called it an insecure app so i don't know what's going on there but i i didn't bother connecting it because i would hate to be have my email hacked by something like a little camera like this um the sound you know there's the little speaker there I'm not even sure maybe the mic picks it up in the same spot or maybe the mic picks it up here a little dot so basically the sound is is not great it's kind of a, a cool add-on to have it does pick up pretty good sound but um everything's pretty weak if you're if you're talking back and forth with someone unless it's a very quiet environment or they're quite close um i don't like that the thing is round that was a big i don't know they probably tried to make it look cool but but you know it's egg shaped so it's just going to roll around so if i want to use it i don't want to mount it and say i want to use it maybe as a as a little game camera and go place it somewhere now i got it rolling around so i'd like if they had made it a different shape so that it would just sit on its own instead of rolling around <laughs> and then of course the number one drawback to these um, is going to be the price uh, of needing a cell connection so you're going to have to go out and, and pay for a SIM card and a connection. Um, when I got it too, it, it didn't really connect very well when I first got it. Um, I tried it on TELUS and I was getting quite intermittent connections, hard time connecting. So I went out and, and I switched to Virgin Mobile and same thing. I called their support and their support was really good. They seemed to, to be helping with the problems. They gave me a uh, a kind of a file to update on on the on the, the micro SD card and uh, about a day later everything was working so I don't know if they did something or maybe I just was in a bad connection point at that point and I just wasn't getting a connection anyway that was the first day or so that I had it and since then it's been over two weeks and, and no problems sometimes it doesn't connect the first time but it usually always connects the second time as far as a cell but you're paying for that sim um, and in here in Canada, we don't have very cheap data rates, so I'm paying, I think it's $28 a month for one gig on a prepaid data plan. So um, one gig seems to be enough if you're just checking it, you know, every day or so. Real Link kind of advises that one gig of data is what the average person will use. But, you know, keep in mind if you were to uh, use 1080p all the time and be streaming it or having them uploading to the cloud you could really eat through the data so that's one drawback to the the thing is um 
you get better be protecting something that's worth a lot if you're going to you know do be doing a lot of streaming and checking of it um also i i would like if they would have uh, made it made it actually be able to connect by wi-fi as well so you know i might be here on the rig and i want to see what happened maybe last night um and it's mounted up there i could go and get the the s pull the sd card out of it and then go look at it on my computer but uh, to connect to it i actually have to go through its cell system to look at things so you're eating data so it would have been nice if they had actually an optional wi-fi to connect to it through a wi-fi you know because then it wouldn't cost any money to connect to it so that's one feature i'd like to see them do but overall i give it a, a thumbs up it's a, a nice uh, a nice security camera so there you go till next time ray from loveyourv.com cheers everyone